The air. Water. Earth. And sun. Awes us. The four awesome forces of nature can provide a thousand times more energy than we need. You are also awesome. You and me and all earth kind are the fifth element. We are literally changing the world. Technology is now harnessing nature's awesome power for electricity, heat, and transportation. And the best news is that the clean energy transition can save us money and create a more prosperous, just, beautiful, and sustainable civilization today. Welcome, awesome people. This episode is going to be a retrospective on the human loss and financial cost of climate disruption and the importance of government policy to lead the way to a bright future. A little over a week ago, we saw yet another major storm hit the United States. A colleague sent me a picture of a major tornado taken through a car window in New Jersey. In Westchester, New York, my friends and colleagues at Murphy Brothers Contracting watched eight feet of flood water fill their buildings and destroy over 300 cars in the local community. They and the tenants on the first floor of their self-storage facility spent all Labor Day weekend moving, drying, and cleaning the soaked property. They were the lucky ones. That area of New York was declared a national disaster area. Altogether, 89 people across the country died, and there was over $50 billion of damages. Climate deniers continue to spread the myth that it's only the normal cycles of weather. But the United States Department of Commerce has documented that 2020 was the sixth consecutive year in which there were 10 or more billion dollar disaster weather events in the United States, and in fact, 2020 set a new record for disaster events with $22 billion weather and climate disasters. So far in 2021, we've had nine weather climate disaster events with losses exceeding a billion dollars each to affect the United States. While we've had extreme weather with rain and floods on the East Coast, the West Coast saw temperatures of 110 degrees in Washington state. In Siberia, the temperature reached over 100 degrees. In Boulder, Colorado, my son and his friends tried to go camping in the beautiful Rocky Mountains last week, but they had to return home because they couldn't breathe due to the smoke coming from the wildfires in California and Oregon and there are still 60 uncontained fires raging and threatening families in at least five states. Okay, if you're listening to this podcast, you're already aware of the dire situation and the challenges we're facing. You've heard the August report of the International Panel on Climate Change, where scientists are reporting changes in the Earth's climate in every region and across the entire climate system. The latest study documented that strong and sustained reductions in emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases would limit climate change, and that even though it could take 20 to 30 years to see global temperatures stabilize, the benefits for air quality would come quickly. So the question is, what can you and I do? Well, there are many possible responses including taking responsibility for our own energy use and greenhouse gas emissions, each of us taking our next step to have clean energy at home and at work and lead by example. One of the largest opportunities for dramatic change is now happening at the government level, the place where we combine our collective power and can institute action. Over the next few weeks, we're going to focus on some of the exciting policy initiatives that are happening at the local, state, and federal level. But today, 
I'd like to share an Associated Press article on a U.S. Department of Energy study called Solar Futures that was just released this past week. Quote, solar energy has the potential to supply up to 40% of the nation's electricity within 15 years, a tenfold increase over current solar output and one that would require massive changes in U.S. policy and billions of dollars in federal investment to modernize the nation's electric grid. The report by the Energy Department's Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy says that the United States would need to quadruple its annual solar capacity and continue to increase it year by year as it shifts to a renewable dominant grid in order to address the existential threat posed by climate change. The report released this past Wednesday is not intended as a policy statement or administration goals, officials said. Instead, it is designed to guide and inspire the next decade of solar innovation by helping us answer questions like, how fast does solar need to grow to increase capacity and to what level? Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm said in a statement that, the study illuminates the fact that solar, our cheapest and fastest growing source of clean energy, could produce enough electricity to power all the homes in the United States by 2035 and employ as many as 1.5 million people in the process. The report comes after President Joe Biden declared climate change has become everybody's crisis during a visit to neighborhoods flooded by the remnants of Hurricane Ida. Biden warned Tuesday that it's time for the United States to get serious about the code red danger posed by climate change or face increasing loss of life and property. Quote, we can't turn it back very much, but we can prevent it from getting worse, Biden said before touring a New Jersey neighborhood ravaged by severe flooding caused by Ida. We don't have any more time. The national disaster has given Biden an opportunity to push Congress to approve his plan to his plan to spend one trillion dollars to fortify infrastructure nationwide, including electric grids, water and sewage systems to better defend against extreme weather. This legislation has cleared the Senate and awaits a House vote. The U.S. installed a record 15 gigawatts. That's 15,000 megawatts of solar electric capacity in 2020, and solar now represent a little over 3% of the current electricity supply, the Energy Department said. In the future solar future studies prepared by the DOE's National Renewable Energy Lab, it shows that by 2035, the country would need to quadruple its yearly solar capacity additions and provide 1,000 gigawatts, 1 million megawatts, of power to a renewable dominant grid. By 2050, solar energy could provide 1,600 gigawatts on a zero carbon grid, producing more electricity than consumed in all the residential and commercial buildings in the country today, the report said. Decarbonizing the entire energy system could result in as much as 3,000 gigawatts or 3 million megawatts of solar by 2020, 2050 due to increased electrification in transportation, buildings, and industrial sectors, the report said. The report assumes that clean energy policies currently being debated in Congress will drive a 95% reduction from 2005 levels in the grid's carbon emissions by 2035 and a 100% reduction by 2050. But even without aggressive action from Congress, an outcome that is far from certain in an evenly divided House and Senate, installed solar capacity could still see a sevenfold increase by 2050 relative to 25, 2005, the report said. Even without a concerted policy effort, market forces and technology advances will drive significant deployment of solar and other clean energy technologies, as well as substantial decarbonization, the report said, citing falling costs for solar panels and other factors. 
To achieve 40% solar power by 2035, the U.S. must install an average of 30 gigawatts of solar capacity per year between now and 2025, double its current rate, and 60 gigawatts a year from 2025 to 2030, the report said. These goals far exceed what even the solar industry has been pushing for as the Biden administration and Congress debate climate and clean energy legislation. The Solar Energy Industries Association has urged a framework for solar to achieve 20% of U.S. electric generations by 2030. Abigail Ross, SEA's president and CEO, said that the DOE study, quote, makes it clear that we will not achieve the levels of carbonation, decarbonization that we need without significant policy advances. The solar group a letter, sent a letter to Congress, sent a letter to Congress Wednesday from nearly 750 companies spelling out recommended policy changes. We believe with those policies and a determined private sector, the Biden administration's goals are definitely achievable, Hopper said. Look, there's many actions we can each take to reduce carbon emissions and create a cleaner, healthier, more prosperous and just civilization for our children and all future generations. Today, pick up your phone and call the United States Congress member and Senator. Let them know that you support the federal government's investment in creating a clean energy infrastructure that will reduce greenhouse gas emissions and create over 1.5 million American jobs. When you pick up the phone, your elected representatives interpret your taking the time to make that call as representing the viewpoint of 1,000 of their constituents. So make the call today and see your actions be multiplied by a factor of 1,000. Today's podcast was sponsored by Climate Master Geothermal. About a third of our greenhouse gases come from our burning fossil fuels to provide heat and hot water for our homes and buildings. Using the power of the earth with geothermal, we can lower our energy costs by up to 70% and have a positive environmental impact. Go to www.awesomeearthkind.com and download one of the free webinars to find out how easy it is to save money with geothermal heating and cooling. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us today, awesome people. We'd like to hear from you, and we'll give you the chance to win a $150 LED light fixture if you help us understand how Awesome Earthkind can help you achieve your clean energy goals. Just go to awesomeearthkind.com and click on Tell Us. When you fill out the survey, you'll automatically be entered into a sweepstakes for a free LED light fixture, and we'll be giving one away every month for the rest of the year. If you like what we're doing, please rate and review the Awesome Earthkind podcast on your favorite podcast platform. And if you're interested in adding clean energy consulting to your existing business offerings, go to awesomeearthkind.com earn. When you refer us to a commercial building and they decide to go clean and save green with EarthKind Energy's consulting services, your referral will save money and you'll earn finder's fees worth thousands of dollars. Remember, you are an awesome force of nature and can make a real difference. Take your next step to create the clean energy future we all want and our children need and deserve. Until next time, take care, be well, and energize.